everybody, welcome to part three of the 12 part series, Detective Holmes follows the case of the smart money. What a show we've got for you today. We're gonna to talk about the clues that the smart money footprints come in on the charts and I've got a live trade running right now with our markets.com MT5 platform from an alert actually that came in this morning as I was traveling up to uh, London where we're filming here in Liverpool Street and what a setup it is and it happens quite frequently. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time and this is the we've got uh, a 12 part series that we're doing this is part three part one and part two um, are already recorded so let's talk a little bit first of all about why we call this detective homes because I have had quite a few emails about this and that's the reason that was me as a young police officer with Hampshire Constabulary uh, based out of Southampton um, I was with them for many years and actually um, when I left the force uh, I got into my own business but uh, because I have a surname H-O-L-M-E-S like the famous Sherlock um, this we thought we'd uh, play around a little bit with the show make it a little bit more fun but there's no fun sometimes when you're looking at charts because we're dealing with real money and real trades so a little bit about um, how I'm going to approach this some of you will have seen this before you are the jury m the audience listening to this whether you're it's on YouTube whether you're watching on markets.com whether you're watching it in, in any area or any arena on social media um, you're the jury I'm simply the detective I'm presenting to you the evidence on the charts and there's plenty of it to, to show you today we try to keep the shows to about 30 to 40 minutes long we try to keep them punchy and get straight to the point which is exactly what I'm going to do today so I'm the, I'm the author of uh, this book trading in the shadow of the smart money and the complete volume spread analysis system explained and today we're going to make sure that you get an opportunity to download the first book absolutely no charge I'll show you where you can actually uh, do that now how did I become a trader and investor well I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go through uh, the presentation but when I wrote this book it's all about how the markets can be manipulated and how the footprints of the smart money are left on the price chart if you know what you're looking for let's get straight to a trade we're in right now with a live account won't mess around and I'm going to come in here to my uh, MT5 platform and you should be able to see very clearly here a trade set up from the top and an entry and it was just above that bar where my stop is so I'm going to talk you through all of this and but I want you to um, we're focusing on this zoom in on that bar there because that was the catalyst for what happened in the background and this is why we have what we call in my book the mushrooming over of the chart the stops through break even that's part of our strategy and this strategy I'm using here is called sharpshooter for MT5 we also work with other platforms as well but for the purposes of this presentation we're focusing on uh, markets.com MT5 platform which I'm very happy with now we're still falling I will leave that stop there as I'm presenting this but towards the end if it continues to move I'm going to chase it further down but this is going to be more of a swing trade position now what instrument is it it's the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar and I've got my alert system here working live as I'm filming so that we can see the alerts coming in because there may be other setups during this 12 week presentation I'll be trading with you live but we'll have to do that over a probably two hour period and we'll do it um, live to the to the audience on markets.com so we're in that trade I'll explain it all to you I'll explain the principles and I'll show you where you can download the trading plan that goes with that setup so there's absolutely no doubt okay at the moment the trade has moved below prior support which means I expect it to fall further that's another key part of the volume spread analysis methodology so I was very blessed uh, many many years ago 20 years ago now I ran my own businesses several of them um, after leaving the police but I met this guy Okay, my, my master of I call him has he's written a book called master of the markets but he passed away in 2016 his name is Tom George Williams and he is the inventor and it's, I have to credit everything I do to Tom George Williams because without him um, he was like a second father to me he taught me pretty much everything I know about trading and investing and kept me out of the herd trading and into recognizing the footprints of the smart money so now I travel the world I do live events I do TV shows like this I do webinars every week we have live trading showing the footprints of the smart money now what I want to talk about this week in this show is the most important VSA principles if you want to call them signals that's up to you I prefer the word that Tom taught me he said they're principles of Wyckoff volume spread analysis now if you're watching this video 
for the first time, go back and look at parts one and parts two, where it sets the scene as we move forward. So today, we're looking at the footprints of the elephant. And those footprints are seen in the massive volume spikes. And that's what we search for with this system. And I'm going to show you today how the system that's plugged into MT4 in this example, but plugs in, as I said, to other software programs, Ninja Trader, MT4, some people use that, Sierra charts, Infinity charts, there are plenty. Same thing, same principles. But I'm showing you today Forex. Next week, I'm going to show you stocks. And I'm going to show you a strategy called PRISM using the same principles that I'm going to show you here. Because ironically, a lot of people don't realise this, that the principles that work in stocks work in Forex, in futures and commodities. And in any time frame. That's the beauty of this system. You can adapt it to your style of trading. If you're a scalper, we have a scalping system. If you're a swing trader, we have a swing trading system. If you're an investor, we have an investment system for all of these markets. So let's focus in on, as we move forward, what do I mean in the book Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money? I'll tell you how I came up with that name. I was with Tom in Worthing in the south of England where he, he lived for many, many years. He retired as a former syndicate trader from Beverly Hills in California. And he came back uh, in the early 90s and decided, I want to program into a computer the knowledge I've experienced from my 14 years as a syndicate trader using the Wyckoff method. And he found someone to do that for him. And they sat down and began to start the process of what we're seeing today, which is volume spread analysis. It's a computerized software program that takes all the principles of Richard D. Wyckoff, a trader I talked about earlier in the first presentation from the 1930s and embellishes on that. And we're not interested in what all the hype and the media and everyone's telling us, we're interested in the chart. And if we hear an analyst's view of a market, we go and look at the chart. If we read in the newspaper that BP as it's falling is going to the toilet, we look to the chart to see if we can buy it. If we hear that gold's going to the moon and the price has gone up on big volume, we look to the chart for the truth. We don't rely on anything else at all in volume spread analysis. That doesn't mean, however, that we don't listen to news and we don't listen to the analysts. It's very important because that's what influences the group traders. And that's a very important part of ESA because we're trying to put you into the opposite of the herd, as we call them, the group traders. We want you to become a predator. And that's my mission over this 12 week show. So let's go some basics now. We've already talked a couple of weeks ago about some of the basics. I now wanna introduce some of the Wyckoff method to you and we're gonna relate that to the, to the chart on the, the New Zealand dollar. Now, just so you know, I'm actually using the markets.com app here to manage the trade as well because I can't just manage it from the screen while I'm here. We're still in a position, I'm on the phone with our head trader who's managing this as well. And basically you can see here on the chart New Zealand dollar, you can see very clearly if you, you can have to zoom in pretty close on that, but I'm on the one minute time frame watching it fall as we go, and I'm using just a straightforward app. And here come, as, a, as we film this, zoom in there, you can see the alert coming in from the system telling me another setup's just appeared in the Australian dollar, US dollar. We're going to have a look at it as it comes in. So, the concepts. Let's talk about the masters. I owe everything I do to these two gentlemen have both passed away, unfortunately, but their knowledge has not passed. It's been left with me and several others. One of the great experts that we recognise uh, is a guy called Philip Friston. Now, Philip Friston, who I will be interviewing on this show, is probably the foremost expert in the world in the volume spread analysis method. And he's written a book, it's on amazon.com, and we'll, I won't give you the title, you can just type in Philip Friston, but, well, I will tell you, it's his journey to the Wyckoff volume spread analysis method. But I want, don't want to spoil the thunder for when we interview Philip in a few weeks time. Because if you read what Philip has said in his book, it just takes what we have said, Tom and myself in our books, takes it to a higher level. So Philip will be with us, we hope in a few weeks live to present to you and share his knowledge. He was a fund manager for over 25 years trading the FTSE markets, the AIM markets. He's a specialist in the UK markets, but he now trades markets all over the world. And he's a very great friend of mine, and I'm looking forward to having him on the show. Also, we'll be inviting our chief technology officer and a genius, um, Grigory Margolin, who developed the system 
that I'm using today to trade, and we trade um, not just in Forex and futures, we trade stocks as well. Grigory was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, and he'll be coming in uh, again in the next few weeks to discuss with us how he took the knowledge from Tom and myself and computerized it into something which I believe is a market leader in finding trade setups based on the Wyckoff method and volume spread analysis. So what are the basics of Wyckoff? Let's get through this very quickly. So Wyckoff studied market action and it was based on volume and price even in his day because they had something called the tape. Wyckoff determined where risk and reward for optimal for trading. That's a key part of the Wyckoff VSA trading methodology and strategies that we teach you. That's key. We determine risk versus reward. Wyckoff studied the psychology of trading and why smart money buy and sell at certain times. Why do they buy on depressed prices and sell when everyone's buying at the tops? That's how the market has to work. That's what I'm teaching you. Wyckoff explained to us the shifts between the weak holders, which we call the herd, the group, to the strong holders, which we know and I call the smart money. I think Tom would call them the professional side of the market if he was still here. And Wyckoff introduced the term to us, the composite operator. What does that actually mean? There's an alert. See, I'm, I said the Aussie dollar. I'm not planning this. There it is. It's coming. Here we go. Oh, up thrust. Okay. Here we can see it very clearly. This is the Smart Center Pro technology I'm using, which is our fun software. And if we zoom in here, we can see that the software has now emailed me with an alert. It's just come in because the trending system on the 30, 15, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 has all aligned just like it's happened on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So the Aussie dollar is following the New Zealand dollar, and there is the alert. We'll have a look at it before we finish. Don't worry, we'll be coming to it. So the composite operator is simply the consensus of opinion, as Wyckoff discussed it, of the large operators. In his day, in Wyckoff's day, in the 20s and 30s, it would be JP Morgan, it would be Otto Kahn. Um, all of these big traders were defined as the smart money and they would move price. But in those days, they had something called the bucket shops, and they would use rumour and conjecture to encourage the public to rush into these bucket shops. And when they heard that JP Morgan was buying railway stocks, the next day it was in the newspaper, the stocks went up. So they'd all rush in to the bucket shops to buy that stock, and of course the big small money players said, well, we brought it down here, they take it. It's all yours, have it, with pleasure. And they made a profit because that's what the business is about. It's about profitable, profitable trading. You're not always gonna make profit in the market, but I'm hopefully gonna teach you over this, this course that you can identify optimal places to measure your risk worth versus reward as the market unfolds in front of you. So what's the key points we're looking at in Wyckoff? They're very simple, there's nothing rocket science here. In fact, Wyckoff as a method and volume spread analysis is not based on mathematical formulas and it's not based on technicals and it's not even based on fundamentals. It's based on supply and demand. It's based on cause and effect. It's based on effort versus result. That's it, that's what we're measuring in the software. We're not measuring stochastics and yes, we have it. If you wanna use it, I don't use any of it. Never have done. Now here, Wyckoff always looks at the big picture. So we use 500 price bars of information in more than one time frame. So you'll notice that often when I open a chart, I won't just have the, you know, the five bars at the front there, I'll have massive amounts of bars, sometimes up to 500, to look at the big picture. Because why? I want to look at where the big volume spikes are in the background, because when price goes back up to those levels, just like happened in the New Zealand dollar, it rejected the price level. I'll show you that as we, as we finish here. Because we had a double top, and we had what's called the end of a rising market signal. The other thing, before we go to the next slide here, is we look for what we call affectionately Yao Ming bars. Yao Ming um, is now retired, but he was uh, a very, very tall basketball player in the US, had played for the, the Houston uh, Astros or Rockets, I believe, seven foot six. And when Tom was teaching me to trade, he said, Gavin, you've got to look for volume spikes. I said, well, how do I know that? He said, you use your eyes. You put up 500 bars. He said, imagine you are traveling down Michigan Avenue in Chicago, where I used to live for 20 years. 
and an alien lands. There's no one else around. And it lands next to you. You've never seen a human. And the alien says to you, Gavin, we want to know how tall are you? Perfectly good question. I'm actually six foot two. But of course, with nothing to compare me to, it doesn't make any sense. Now, my daughter Olivia, she's growing quickly, but she's about three foot six at the moment. And if you look at Yao Ming, he's seven foot six. So if I put Olivia next to me and then Yao Ming, clearly the standout in the crowd is Yao Ming. So affectionately, I've talked about it in my webinars because I think he was a great player. If you see a very tall volume spike, a Yao Ming bar, you better pay attention because smart money are giving you a signal. They're the elephant in the room. They've just put their footprint on. Now all you've got to do is follow it. You don't go and trade immediately. It took me some time to take that trade today in the New Zealand dollar because I had to see the market change behaviour, which we'll talk about next week, change in behaviour. So the other thing we look for um, is trends as well. We've talked about change behaviour, but the trend. The trend actually is your friend. But when it's going up and you think you're in an uptrend and you see a big volume spike and you buy, that is not your friend because you're buying the top very likely. But if you see the volume spike, as we saw in the New Zealand dollar, and the market moves down below that bar, which I call the trigger number, then the trend becomes your friend because it's changed behaviour. It's all very logical. There's nothing particularly clever about it. So volume spread analysis, reading the tape. Tape reading seems to us the science of determining from the tape the immediate trend of prices. It's a method of forecasting from what appears on the tape now to what's likely to appear in the future. The tape was from Wyckoff's day. We now call it volume. It's the activity of the smart money or the professional side of the market. Volume is activity. As I said in the first presentation we did, volume is the key to the truth. Volume added to your technical analysis or your fundamentals will confirm or deny what you think the trade is happening. You Sometimes you will see the end of a rising market signal where the market's gapped up. The news is bullish. We showed that with Qantas in part two of Detective Homes. Everyone was buying, professionals just sold. Lots of alerts coming in now. GBP AUD, Euro GBP and Euro Swissy, which we've also been watching, has triggered a short now. And we've got the US 500, which is of course the S&P, also triggering shorts. And we're filming this, just to be clear, at 2.08 on the 1st of May 2019. So this is when this is being filmed. Uh, it's being filmed live, so this is all happening live as I'm filming this. And you can see where the weakness is coming in. That's how this system works. It's warning us that the market's turning to the downside or here in the GBP AUD to the upside. The thing I said to you last week, I was going to talk about this week, is what we're going to show you on the live chart shortly. It's accumulation and distribution by the smart money. Accumulation is simply buying. Distribution, simply selling. If you distribute something, you're getting rid of it. If you're accumulating it, you're, you're buying it. That's everything that the VSA method teaches you. How to recognise the accumulation, how to recognise the distribution. Recognise that, you're halfway there because you're seeing what the professionals are doing. And that's what volume teaches you. It's the footprint there. So the composite operator or smart money move the market in phases. They don't just go in and sell everything at once and collapse it. It's all over time and periods, which is why we use multiple time frame analysis. Markets go up, down and sideways. We call that churning because of these phases. We've seen very recently gold in a downtrend and then starting to churn in a level ready for the next move. I'll be showing you that next week. Knowing what phase the market is, is key to your success. At the moment, we're in a bullish phase in the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and everyone's negative. That's what happens in bull markets. Everyone reports negativity while the professionals keep buying on the way up. But at some point in the very near future, there'll be such euphoria about this up move that we'll see one of our signals. And you're gonna see it today. We're gonna to talk about it today. It's the end of a rising market signal. Um, and in fact, what I might even do is, is wait till it happens live over the next 12 week period. And when it happens live, I'll tell you. So follow, follow it live on markets.com because we will be doing live uh, events, not just pre-recorded, 
and see that indicator as it appears. And if it appears on a weekly chart or a daily chart, that is very likely going to mark certainly a top of that level or at least a collapse down to another level below. So knowing what phase the market in is key, as we'll see. We buy when accumulation is underway. When the professionals are buying, that's what we as VSA experts, Wyckoff experts want to do. And we want to sell when the distribution happens. Okay. Now look, there's loads of alerts coming in right now, which is not totally surprising because most of the trade setups that we see in Forex happen in the London session and the US Open. That's between 2 p.m. UK time and 4.30 p.m. UK time because the London fix, which is the LIBOR fix, happens at 4 p.m. And most of the big smart money start to move the market between 2 and 4.30. You go and check the volume on your charts. You see how many alerts we get at that time. You don't have to trade 10, 15 hours a day at all. Okay. Um, I was talking to Tilly here who works at markets.com exactly about how many, how many hours a day do we have to trade. For me, most of the trades happen within a three hour period. Now, if you're in the Australian markets, you get a similar period when the Japanese market opens and when the Australian markets open. So there's plenty of times to trade, but you don't have to be at a screen every single minute. With this system, you can get an alert on, even on your phone. And in fact, I'm just seeing one come in now, actually, funnily enough. It's, uh, yeah, again, it's just confirming this trade on the New Zealand dollar. It, it's still falling, uh, as we can see, uh, because of the weakness that, that's in the background, as we'll talk about. So we've seen the end of a rising market in this particular um, uh, uh, pair, the cross-currency pair, the New Zealand USD, which I don't trade all that often, but when the principle's there, you have to take the trade because clearly, we well, don't have to take anything. You have to look at the probability that that indicator is going to change price. Now remember, and I'll clearly say this, trading involves great risk. And I'll, I'll say a disclaimer here right now. Trading options, options on stocks, futures, forex, does involve great risk. If you're unsure of what you're doing, don't trade or get professional advice or learn to trade. Because at the end of the day, when you come and open an account with any of these companies, please bear in mind, your money is at risk. And I want to be very clear about that so you understand what you're doing before you get into this. So, what do we want to look at? We want to look at the laws, the universal laws that govern all markets. Okay, and there's three of them. And there's a fourth law, which I believe makes a big difference to your future and also not just that to your ability to be happy in life and be successful in life to, to get what you want and it's in chapter nine of trading in the shadow of the smart money the first law is the law of supply and demand which is all on the chart the second law is the law of cause and effect all on the chart and the third law which we saw today in the uh, new zealand dollar us dollar is the law of effort versus result the fourth law is becoming more and more understood if you want to be successful in life it's called the law of attraction and it's written there's a great book called the secret by Rhonda Byrne and in that book she discusses the principles of, of believing in yourself and your ability and I've written about that I think I'm the first trader to do it in chapter 9 of trading in the shadow read it because what happened to me is absolute fact I believed I was going to be trading in a large trading competition in New York I believed I saw it before it happened and when it happened it was like a dream come true, but it was a dream. I never thought I'd be doing that, but you see the picture in the book, it happened, it was in 2010. It took me on a whole career path, a whole journey that I'm on right now. But you must believe in your ability first before you can be successful. And you must understand that what you think will, especially in trading, materialize. If you're negative, you'll make bad trades. If you're very positive and you believe it's gonna be there, it will be there, but you just gotta believe it. So that's a very important law, which we'll talk about in part five of Detective Homes. So what are the phases of the markets? Well, at the moment, this is the phase we're in in the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow and the FTSE. We're up here because what happened here in 2009 and onwards, we went through what we call jumping the creek. That's a saying, a Wyckoff saying that you'll learn more about in part six of Detective Homes. So what we've seen today in, in a lot of these um, markets is a bull run but with a lot of negative news. And as the negative news pulls the market down, the buying happens. And go and look at the schematic that we did in part one. So you've got basically phase A is distribution. Phase B, C, D here is reaccumulation. Okay, and phase E is the bullish markup. 
And that's where we're currently at with, with, as I film this in the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow. So phase A, we stop the trend. Phase B, we build the cause. Phase C and D, we're testing or there's no demand. What does that mean? If we're testing the market, it's falling on low volume. There's no selling pressure, so it's going to bounce. If it then in that phase goes up on low volume and there's no interest at the moment to take the prices higher, it comes back down and it retests. And I'll show you a beautiful chart of that next week. Happens a lot. They don't just take the market to the, to the moon immediately. You don't see that. It's a phase and it takes time and it takes patience. You're paid in this business to be patient, rest assured. And then we define the new trend in phase D. So basically, these are the market phases as defined by the Wyckoff method. You've got accumulation, buying, the markup, reaccumulation on the dips, which we see. If you look at the S&P 500 chart and the NASDAQ, you see it all the time. Then you have the distribution phase, where they sell on all the good news in gold. This is what happened in gold in 2011-12. Distribution. They mark it down, get everyone locked in short. So anyone locked in here who's long, they lock them into poor positions, redistribute, Panic selling sets in, just like happened with British Petroleum, and then they buy. Because if they see the underlying value, the professional money will buy the underlying value. Let me define for you, before we get to that live trade, what is an up bar and a down bar? I keep getting asked this question, and we had, from these TV shows, we've been getting loads of people into the database asking questions. Right. And the biggest one was, Gavin, you talk about an up bar. What the hell do you mean by an up bar? What does that mean? It's an individual price bar that closes higher than the closing price of the previous bar. I repeat, an individual price bar that closes higher than the closing price of the previous price bar is an up bar. What does that look like? It looks exactly, as you can see, what that looks like. And uh, perhaps we can zoom in here on looking at the market that's marked up on high volume. It's an up bar means it's closed higher than the close of the previous bar, but it closes in the middle with a red signal, which is supply coming in, and the market falls. This is an up bar. It's closed higher than the close of the previous bar, and it's got a big red indicator on it, because it's selling on the Yao Ming volume. Highest volume for some bars. What is a down bar, Gavin, Detective Holmes? Well, it's very easy. A down bar is the complete opposite. It's an individual price bar that closes lower than the closing price of the previous bar. It's always the closing price. We're not talking about the high and the low. So it's closing lower than the close of the previous bar. We call that a down bar in VSA. And that's what it looks like. Okay, you can see here the market's marked down. There's Yao Ming, the volume. We close in the middle, the next bar's up, and we have a mini rally. And then we get a red indicator as they resell it and bring it back down. Supply and demand, supply and demand. That's all we're looking at. That's what this software measures. It doesn't measure mathematics, as I said. If we see supply coming in, you get a red indicator. If you see demand coming in, you get a green indicator. And do we get supply and demand imbalances all the way down a move and up a move? Of course we do. That's why they're not just buy and sell signals on their own. They're not. These are VSA principles, but combined with our trading plans, and this, as you can see firing off and behind me, then you're looking for trend alignment, VSA principles, entry based on what we call trigger numbers. I don't have time to explain that all to you now, but if you go to tradeguider.com, you'll be able to find exactly where to get those trading plans. There, if you click on the software link, they're there. You can download them for free, there's no charge. And you can read them, and you can see exactly what I'm telling you in a lot more detail. So I'm not gonna look at those at the moment. Let's go to the indicators that mark what I call climactic volume. These are the massive Yao Ming volume bars which we look for shorts on. Number one, the most important, the end of a rising market. Sign of weakness 51, sign of weakness 14, sign of weakness 5. They've all got numbers because the coding is all slightly different in each VSA principle, but the result is the same. So I don't get too involved in, well, that's a, I did say to Tom at the beginning, why do you have different numbers? Just give it one number. He said, well, I can't, Gavin, because every piece of code for each one is slightly different. A bit like if you looked at an oak tree, he said, Gavin, you'd look at this tree, it looks identical. You know, it's an oak tree. But if you took two leaves off and you look at them like that, they look identical. But if you put them under the microscope, they will look very different because of their composure and their structure. 
It's exactly the same with the VSA indicator. So don't, if you're listening to this video and you're a customer or you're going to buy the software, don't get too wrapped up in the different numbers. Just know that if it's a sign of weakness and it's in a downtrend or it's a climactic volume bar and it's at the top, these are the ones we look for. End of a rising market, the buying climax, the up thrust after supply, supply overcoming demand, very powerful one, possible hidden selling, weakness has appeared. And all of the indicators in the software program have a number associated with them. But most importantly, as I'll show you in a minute, a dialog box, which you read to understand what I know and what Tom knew and what Wyckoff knew. Those dialogue boxes were written by Tom and they were embellished and added to by Philip Friston. And as I said, after Tom Williams, Philip Friston is the leading expert in the world on VSA, which is why it's very important we bring him here to, to talk to you. Signs of strength. My favourite is this one, bag holding. And I've just seen it in a stock, which I'm going to share with you. Not today, I'll save it for a week because it's going to take time for it to move. It's on a, a weekly chart and there's, it's also appeared on a daily chart, but it's bag holding. Now, here's the key to that signal. This we saw on British Petroleum in 2010 as the market collapsed. They said, we cannot cap the well. The day after they said that, we saw this signal. The market had plummeted for days, in fact, weeks. But then I showed you, if you go and look at part one of Detective Holmes with that massive volume in British Petroleum, or if you want to see the chart, just go to www.volumespreadanalysis.com. The chart's there right on the front page with a great interview from Tom. So www.volumespreadanalysis.com, you'll find the actual chart there with the massive volume on the monthly, but the stock doubled in value after that signal appeared. Then you've got the selling climax. We have, and that is literally selling climax means the, the group are panicking. The professionals are saying, thanks, we'll take it. We see it was up here. Now it's down here. It's at lower prices. We like to buy low. We don't like to buy high. We'll take it off you. That's how all markets work. It's not difficult. It's a bit like retail. You can't run a shop and run a shoe shop and buy a pair of shoes for hundred pounds and sell it for 50 and make a profit because you'll go bust. This is how this works. It's, it's exactly the same, but to people just make it very confusing. It's not actually that confusing at all. It's very logical. And then we have potential professional buying, sign of strength, one, two, two. I'm going to teach you that in one complete show because it's the most, after that one, that one is, I think, the second strongest in, in the Trade Guider program. And then demand overcoming supply and what we call the bottom uh, reversal. Now, before we get on to, and again, you can see another alert come in here on the, uh, on the app, still falling, of course, in the New Zealand dollar USD. I'm monitoring on the one minute chart. We've made new lows as we've been filming. Um, so I'm actually now looking at the actual charts here. I'm quite happy to swing trade that position because I can't lose money on it because I've got my stop there. Now, I don't say every stop gets guaranteed. Let me be clear, it doesn't. But I haven't had any issues at all um, with using the MT5, MT4 platforms here. But nevertheless, I don't think any stop is ever guaranteed. Keep that in mind. But I know that I'm protected at the moment and I'm monitoring it here. If I see something I don't like, I can close pretty quickly. So will it work in all, you know, because I saw this article in a, in a magazine a few weeks ago saying that volume and forex, it's totally incompatible, it doesn't work. Um, and it was written by an analyst from a bank. And funnily enough, I thought, well, hold on a second. I'm trading with volume and forex all the time, have been for 19, 20 years. It does work and you're, you're seeing it live in a minute. You actually see it as we showed you at the beginning, it absolutely works. Okay, so the answer to that question is absolutely yes. If you're a Forex or a currency trader and you think volume isn't relevant, it's called tick volume and it's incredibly accurate. In fact, Tom Williams preferred to use the tick volume when he was trading Forex and any other volume. I mean, you can get exchange traded volume in currencies, um, which I, I use both, by the way. I trade with um, the CME group. I use their uh, 6A, 6B, 6C, 6D contracts. Um, I'm doing a live webinar tomorrow where I'm going to show that, um, which will be on Thursday, the 2nd of May. So you'll see this tonight. You can register for that event um, at tradeguider.com. Just go in the database. We'll email you when we uh, start the webinar. And yes, it absolutely works in Forex. So we're going to talk to you over the next week or two about this concept, which is all in the trading plans that are available at the site. So it's scan, confirm, trade to identify trading opportunities by finding unusually high volume on a chart, which we call climactic volume, followed by low volume, which can be no demand at the top or no supply at the bottom, 
at the same price level where we saw the high volume. And it's completely relevant. If, a pri if, if, if you see a markup in price on high volume and professional sold, and then the market drifts back up to that level, and there's now low volume at that level, it means they're not interested, that the ones that move the market, the big smart money, because they've already sold. So it's the group that are holding it up and then suddenly collapse. That's why many retail traders do lose money in this business because they don't get that concept and they buy on that high volume spike and that's a serious mistake. Um, we want to show clear visually trend alignment in multiple time frames. Well, what you've been seeing flashing up on your screen is exactly what we've got. A piece of software that does that for you. You don't even have to bother. That's what the software does. It's, it's useful in that A, it, it confirms a trend alignment, B, it finds the setup and C, as I'll show you, it'll send you an email when the setup's there. So you don't have to go searching and looking for all these, and it, by the way, it will scan hundreds and hundreds of charts in any instrument. So if you're looking at Forex, I'm, I'm here now, I'm monitoring all the majors and all the minors, the lot. But I don't trade all of them. Okay, I'm very selective what I trade. And then what will happen is when a major VSA principle like the end of a rising market appears, it will send an email to the trader and say, it's here. And then when we get um, what we call a sequential setup, that's when we've got the high volume followed by the low volume and then the move, it also it's pre-programmed in, you don't have to do that. It sends you the alert and it sends you the email. And then finally, as I've just mentioned, it allows you to scan hundreds, shortly to be thousands of charts using the Wyckoff VSA trading method. Let's go and have a look at some live charts. Now, before I go, I did say, we're gonna go look at live charts for the last five minutes here. If you wanna get a copy of my book, with my compliments, if you're a markets.com subscriber, or if you're just watching this on YouTube, um, here it is. You go to www.tradeguider.com. So it's just trade guider, all one word. And then you just put in your name and your first name here. That's all you need, put that in. You go onto the database, you get the book and the video, which embellishes a lot more on what I'm doing here. And then we will also be able to then invite you to live trading sessions and also keep you informed of progress with um, events that we're doing um, like this one with markets.com. Let's go to the chart, shall we? All right. So let's put up Smart Center technology and see what we've got. Now, currently, we can see here the short position. Now, you can also see the confirmation signal, which we call confirmation. And it's this bar here, and it's in a downtrend. Now, what does that indicate? Now, if we could zoom in on this, I want you to read what it says. Because this is, if this is in a downtrend, this is a trade setup, especially when the next bar closes lower. Sign of weakness, SOW, sow, it's not a female pig. No, this is a sign of weakness. And that's why it's red. That's why it's colored red. Supply coming in, bar description. So it's telling you, the trader and investor, what's going on. This is an up bar showing an increase in volume, suggesting supply entered the market. Sellers, if volume is ultra high, this could be climactic, which means, and it was, it was very high. Sometimes this can be a breakout through an old top, which is a sign of strength. Well, it's not, there's no old top, clearly a sign of weakness. So you're just ticking the boxes, ticking the boxes. So then if we scroll down, now look carefully to the background. Do you have strength or weakness in the background? What do we have up the top? Weakness in the background. Tick the box. Okay, after a period of rising prices, this could be the start of distribution by one of our professional groups. If there's an old top to the left, this could be absorption volume. If the, this is the key. If the next bar is down, remember I've told you what a down bar is, closing near its lows, this confirms the weakness. Confirmation signal in a downtrend. Look at the next bar, closing right near its low, little bar confirming everything in the trending system is red. This is all proprietary and it's a plug-in for MT4, MT5 and the other software products that we support. So it's all proprietary, but it's all Wyckoff VSA. Weakness, when it appears, appears on up bars like this. Now the golden rule for us is what we'll teach you in the trading plan is we want to get that stop to the next point of supply through the entry. So we're protected because we, we don't want to be stressful. We don't want stress in trading. It doesn't have to be stressful. We're at the point of supply where the stop is. And now we've we got here a live trade actually as it's come in. So you can see here, it's not confirmed yet, but an indicator has just appeared just here. 
If the next bar closes lower, this is going to tank. But the next bar has to close lower than that bar. That is called an upthrust. Now, something else I want to draw your attention to, which is in our new version 4.7, which we released a few months ago, are these things at the top. Now, these little dot dots that you see, and perhaps we could zoom in on these, are the most powerful new addition to the software program because they are called trend clusters. They were originally developed by Tom Williams, but massively improved upon by our chief technology officer and VSA expert, Grigory Margolin, who put these together. What do they represent? Well, I'm going to let Grigory talk about that in a lot more detail, so I don't want to spoil it. They're looking at intersecting support and resistance lines. And they're projected out invisibly. You won't be, if we had to put all the lines on the chart, you wouldn't see the chart. But the software is very clever at doing that. So you're seeing here that we're actually on, right now, as we film this live, a cluster. And we've got an upthrust right in the background. We're in a downtrend already. We're already short. Everything lines up because we've got resistance above us. The resistance started when I took the trade up here. And the clusters relearn themselves every bar in every time frame. This happens to be a five minute chart. So every five minutes they relearn all the intersecting lines of resistance and support. And then if we suddenly see a support line below us and it hits that support and these clusters will change colour. They're grey, they're orange and they're purple. The strongest ones are the purple ones. When you see them on a big time frame like an hourly or four hourly chart, the market seems to hit them and bounce off like a ball. I cannot explain why they work. It's human nature, it's psychology. Tom Williams, who developed them, he developed them with a professor who used to work at the London School of Economics years ago, 20 years ago. Um, and I said to Tom, how do they work? You've got all these clusters and they were represented in the old software with boxes, blocks. I said, why does the market seem to just get there? And almost it's like a hedgerow. It hits them and comes off. And he said, well, Gavin, if you look at it, when it hits that hedgerow, let's say it's going up and it goes up on low, vol low volume, there's no energy to push through the cluster, that's why it comes off. He said, if you were going to drive a car through a hedge, which I don't recommend you do, by the way, you couldn't do it if you were going at two miles an hour and not on the accelerator, you just hit the hedge and bounce. But if you were coming at it at 90 miles an hour and you've got full throttle on, you've got the energy, you're going straight through that hedge. So sometimes these clusters will actually get penetrated and be taken out, but they're rare. And if it is, that means it's a good trade because you've broken a key support line and you will see these clusters at support and resistance levels. So to wrap up here, you've seen here volume spread analysis at work in MT5 with markets.com. We've got alerts coming in, which I'm going to explain in a lot more detail over the coming weeks. These are all flashing and they've got, as you can see, green or red boxes telling me that a sign of weakness has come in on the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. We've got a sign of weakness here on the Aussie dollar USD. If we went to the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen, just as an example here, we pull up what's called our VSA scanner. Now what we notice about the scanner, which is part of the system, the, the, um, the, the charting system, is that we've got multiple instances of email alerts telling us that the market's negative on the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. Okay, so let's go, let me come off the um, screen here, and we'll finish off with the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen, and I'll just explain to you, as we finish off here, the principle that's causing this to fall, which we can see very clearly here, this is the one, this is the one hour chart, so here's the one hour chart, okay, and over here, we can see in the scanner, which sent the email alert out if we got something called the upthrust. I'm going to finish off by just explaining that one principle because it's so important. Many are important, but look at this bar here where the red indicator is. Now, I mentioned to you that the markets move on universal laws, which they do. Supply and demand, cause and effect, effort versus result. Now, let's look at this price bar. This is all effort and result. The effort is in the volume to try to push it up. There's not much volume on it, in fact. But the result is we close near the low of the bar, in fact, right on the low. If you read the dialog box, okay, the bar is marked up but falls off rapidly to close on or near its low, normally with an average to wide spread. That's what we call a wide spread. 
And the very next bar closes, actually in this case, level. And look at what happens to this instrument. It, it goes with trend. And we can see here on the five minute chart, we've got an up thrust, but over here on the hourly, we have no demand. And we're now making lower lows towards the low of the widespread bar. That's a VSA trade setup. That will email you and tell you it. And the system will tell you more about it. So I hope you've enjoyed part three of Detective Homes uh, tracking the smart money here. And that's as good an example I can probably give you. Um, sometimes that happens. You're doing a, an event like this and the market starts to move and everything fires off. Some days that doesn't happen. And that's the other thing about this system. It will tell you when not to trade. If all of these are in different colors, there is no trade. So actually, although the system will give you setups, it will also tell you when not to trade. Because if that was gray and that was green and that was red and that was gray, we wouldn't have trend alignment. And the time frames I'm using here is the, uh, as you can see, the one hour, the 30, the 15. In fact, if you could just zoom in on this, you'll see this is what I call sharpshooter. I'm using the hourly, the 30, the 15, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the bar at the edge here, the box at the edge, is the live bar that fills with the color. The coloring of this is all proprietary to Trade Guider Systems International. It's our proprietary uh, software package. So I look forward to seeing you all uh, for the next uh, Detective Homes Follows the Smart Money. We've got, I hope we're going to have a special guest, possibly one of our customers coming in, because over the next few weeks, it won't just be me you'll be listening to, you'll be hearing the experiences of others. Some who are experts in BSA, some have only been doing it for a few weeks or months, so you can get a flavour of how you can become a professional chart reader using the Wyckoff VSA method. Take care, God bless, wish you well, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.